The color conditions will be presented in the for loop. Let's say we need 10 presentations. And i is the index of the condition and respectively the interstimulus interval, which will be used during each iteration. Uh, this is a clever way to variate the color. If the current cond is equal to 1, we multiply it with 250 in order to make it red. If it is equal to 2, we multiply it with second element of this RGB array in order to make it green. As simple as that. So if it is 1, it will be 250, 0, 0. If it is 2, it will be 0, 220, 0. A uh, very important measure is VBL timestamp, which is generated by the flip. What is this? It is a time of vertical blink, which is a specific type point, time point when the screen is refreshed. As you know, any screen has its refresh rate. And it cannot be refreshed at any moment you wish. If it is 60 Hz, then the interval is about 17 milliseconds. So if you refresh at point zero, you cannot refresh another time after 5 milliseconds. No way. You have to wait until uh, 17 or, which is one uh, frame, or two frame, which will be. Uh, 334, and so on and so forth. So, when you finally manage to flip with the help of this function, it generates the time point, which is the onset of your stimulus. And at the same moment, well, the next line, you run kbq start, so that your keyboard is started to be acquired. Uh, and at the end, you flip in other time, and here you add one argument, which is VBL timestamp, the old measured timestamp, plus one, which is one second. This means that you wish to flip at this time plus one second, which gives you an exposure time of the stimulus of one second. After another one second, which we wait with function wait sex, which will do it precisely, it will give us in total two seconds of acquisition. We run kbq stop, and then we don't care what happens with the keyboard anymore. We do whatever we want, but at a certain moment, we wish to run kbq check, which will ask, okay, what is recorded in the queue? And here we get whether something was pressed and uh, which key was pressed and at which time. If something is pressed, here we run a loop of if. If pressed is equal to 1, then we do it. If it is not equal to 1, then we leave our, you remember we prepared in advance, RT array of minus 1s. So we leave this value to be minus 1, which will tell us that this time nothing has been pressed. But it is, if it is 1, then we wish to know which key and when it, it happened. We take first press. We find when first, which element of first press is more than 0. It will be an array of 250 something. And you find which element is greater than zero and it will be the time so it is double coding at the same time it indicates the time of the key press and the the name of the key or the index of the key so you find this element you take the value which is stored there and we subtract from it vbl times timestamp which is if you remember the onset of the stimulus 
So subtracting one from the other gives you the reaction time, the first key that has been pressed. And this one gives you the index of the key, which will be either 37 or 39. If you remember, we acquired just those two. It can be correct response or not. Uh, let me remind you quickly how to use kbq check function. First of all, there must be some latency to let all the keys of the keyboard to become deactivated. Then you run kbq start and from this moment and until the moment when you execute kbq check the keyboard will be continuously monitored and if a key press occurs its timing is recorded precisely in the kbq object. You can do at the same time many different things. You can wait, you can show images, so you can make computations. But as soon as you run kbq check, or you can stop the, the execution of kbq start with other function, which is kbq stop, the acquisition is finished. And if something is pressed, it is recorded in this first press variable and you can uh, get to previous parts of the video to see how to uh, extract the timing of the key press and uh, the identity of the key. The next important issue is that all the data recorded during an experimental session has to be safely stored. It's dangerous to save your data if you don't uh, specify uh, precisely the, the file name. You can lose valuable data if you save under the same file name during repeated experiments. Therefore, a very useful trick I would like to advise you is first to identify the current date, which can be done with this MATLAB function, dateStr. out of the timing parameter achieved from the function clock and it forms a numerical string of a fixed length which encodes precisely the year, the month, the day, the hour and the minute. Typically experiments don't occur more often and if you add this part to the, the main name of your uh, file name like RT results and then you concatenate this string you obtain a unique file name each time unique each saving of the results and then you use function save indicating first the file name and then all the variables you want to save uh, be careful and don't forget to indicate the names of the variables as strings and not as variables because otherwise it will try to to read what is inside uh, the variable and to use it as the name of the variable 
which will be misleading. So this is the, the proper syntaxes. This is the entire script for measuring reaction times and to run uh, all the three uh, Donders' paradigms. Simple reaction time, go-no-go, -go, and choice reaction time. Before you run the script, which will be available online for you to, to play with it, I would like to, to guide you through the, the content uh, and to explain or to remind once again the significance of each line. There are comments everywhere, but anyways, it's better to, to give some explanations. In total, there are 74 lines and it is not much. It is a fairly small script and it is good. Try to make your scripts as small as possible. It will simplify life both for you and for others who might use your script in the future. First of all, you run clear all to clear all the variables which are stored in the workspace. Uh, then you start loop try, which will end right there with sketch and end. If you remember this outcome and storage of the error message in the variable x, as well as running function to close the cyclebox window, will happen in case of any error in between of try and catch. It's very useful. I recommend to, to do it in most of the cases. It's not obligatory, but pretty useful for debugging. And uh, when you are not totally sure that your script is going to work well. The first line of the main script is the preference. You skip most of the accurate verification of the synchronization of the screen. Uh, some more videos will be dedicated to this exciting and complex uh, topic later. At the moment, you just consider it as an initialization procedure, which lets you to proceed without much difficulties on most of machines. Then you identify the number of the screen, find the maximal index, and identify it as your main screen. Then you open window. This is a very important step. Actually, it creates the window which will cover the, the entire screen. It will be gray. Here we indicate the background color. And here we get the dimensions and the window uh, index, the identifier, which will be used many times subsequently for different functions, which deal with, with operations on the screen. Then we wait for one second because this can take some time and we need to, to give our system time to finish it. Afterwards, we hide mouse cursor. We don't need it for this task. We uh, compute the center of the screen as the half of the third and the half of the fourth element of this variable. You remember the third one is the, the maximum uh, index of the x axis, while the, the force is the maximal index of the y axis of the screen.
the string. So half of them give you gives you exactly the, the coordinates of the center of the screen. And this is where we are going to show our stimuli. Now we draw a dot. Well, it is a fairly big dot of 20 voxels and it is black and it is located in the center of the screen and it is sent to the window that has been created before. Draw dots, a dot. Uh, dots can be not necessarily squared, can be uh, disks, uh, but it requires more settings and we don't discuss it here. Probably later, or if you wish, you can read the the manual which is available online. It's it's well explained how to uh, to create different kinds of dots. Then we flip the screen, and this dot appears on the screen. This uh, operation generates a sequence of ones and twos five times repeated. Uh, and those are the conditions or the, the identifiers of the of the conditions that we are going to run. This is how it looks. One, two, one, two, one, two. This rep mat function it repeats this um, small array as many times as you wish, vertically or horizontally. Now we repeat it five times horizontally. Uh, it has 10 elements and we want to randomize them so that we don't know in advance which element, uh, which of the two conditions is shown. And uh, in order to do it, we use function randperm. Randperm randomly uh, selects 10 M elements starting from one and in with 10 in our case. Each time you execute it, it gives a different sequence. And if you put it as an index in the brackets under a variable, you will see that the order of the elements will be shuffled randomly. And this is what we need. Now you see, it's randomized. Uh, now we create interstimulus interval exactly in the same manner. So we repeat it, it, and it. We want it to vary from 0 to 2 with a step of 0, 5. And we also randomize it. So that between trials, the, the intervals vary between, let's say, 1 and 2 and 3 seconds while the presentation itself is one second, which will be clear later. Uh, afterwards, mm, we create key flags for uh, kbq create. Remember, we have discussed it not long ago. And we create in advance arrays where we store reaction times and the, the the identifiers of the keys which has been pressed. Then we wait two seconds just to make sure that everything is settled and we start the, uh, the paradigm. So here we probably do 10 it, I, iterations so that there are 10 stimuli, 5 of one condition, 5 of the other condition. Uh, we draw dots on the screen, the same size as before, just at the top. And here, as a function of the condition, either it is 1 or 2, we identify the color of the dot. If the condition is 1, this is true, and we get 250, then this element is going to be zero and this element is going to be zero as well which is the formula for the red color while if the condition is two it is going to be 
0, 250, and 0, which is green. There are two colors, green and red. And the, the black dot will turn either red or green. After we flip, when we flip, we measure the time. And immediately after this, we start acquisition of the keyboard status. We prepare black dot and we flip another time with a delay of one second. So this is the time of the first flip and we, we add one second and set as the time for the second flip. Here, here we don't it, uh, I, it indicate any time. Here we indicate the timing of the flip. And this will happen one second later than this. Then we wait another second and we stop acquisition of the keyboard. After this, we acquire if any key has been pressed during those two seconds since the onset of the stimulus. Uh, if anything has been pressed, if this is equal to one, uh, we can compute reaction time, which will be the difference between the first vertical blink timestamp and the time of the key press. And we also identify the key, which will uh, be available with the help of the function find. It will give us the, the index, the number of the element, which corresponds to the, the index of the key. And then we will be able to, to understand which key has been pressed. Is it important? Yes. If it is a simple reaction time, we actually don't care which key has been pressed, left or right. If it is go, no go, we ask our subject to press just, let's say, uh, left key in response to red. And if it is a choice time, we ask them to, to press left if the, uh, the stimulus is red and right if the stimulus is blue. After this, has, this trial is finished, we wait this interstimulus interval, which varies from zero to two seconds, and everything starts again. And at the end, we release the queue. We close the uh, psych to box window. We measure current time. We create date string. We create file name string. And we save all the relevant variables, which is reaction times, reaction keys, and condition order in this file. Uh, Pay attention that we created minus once the arrays consisting from minus from ten elements of equal to minus one. Therefore, if one reaction time, two reaction time is missed, we will get instead of something positive like two hundred and fifty, three hundred and something minus one, which is an index of a miss at this trial. It is important because we don't take into account those values when we compute the mean reaction time at the end of the of the experiment. That's about all and we can run uh, the, uh, the experiment. I will show you uh, a sample video of five trials in order to to demonstrate how it looks. Unfortunately, it is not possible to record uh, with my software what happens on the screen while Site Toolbox works. And then we will analyze the results.
the beauty of the Donders uh, design is that you don't need to develop a different program in order to obtain results for different tasks. Here I recorded uh, three uh, short experiments of just 10 trials with different instructions. This one is for simple reaction time. This one is for go, no go. Left key for, well, for simple reaction time, I press left key independently of the stimulus. Here I pressed, pressed left key only if the stimulus was green, uh, was red, and I ignored the greens. In here, I had to discriminate left key for green and uh, left key for red and right key for green. And now I will show how to analyze the results. And here is the script. Uh, as you know, uh, you can put such red dots in MATLAB on the side of the screen, and those, to, uh, those red points will stop the execution of the script. So what do we do here? Here we analyze the first data file for simple reaction time results, and we will plot the, the values of reaction time and compute the mean and plot it as well. Uh, we pick just reaction times which are bigger than 200 milliseconds, which rejects also misses, which are equal to minus 1, if you remember. Um, so if we select only those elements of reaction time array, it will give us good reaction time and excludes everything which doesn't correspond to the criteria. Then we compute the number of elements of this array. It can be less than 10, it can be 5, it can be 7. So we use this function length in order to compute this, this parameter. And then we build a figure. First we create figure, then we run function hold on, which will store everything that uh, is drawn on the figure and allows to draw at the top of what has been done, something else. Then we plot individual values of reaction times, and we want them to be positioned on uh, x axis uh, from 0 to 1, independently of the number of trials and we want them to be plotted as dots. And then uh, we compute mean of all of the dots, all, all of the values, and we draw a line with the help of the function plot, which is very simple. Here we indicate just two values, first x value, last x value, first y value, uh, y value, and the last y value, which should be similar for a line. And this will give us a line about like this. So we can run this one, and it will give us this part of the analysis. Here it is. Those are reaction times. This is the value. It varies from 200 to 450 uh, milliseconds, and this is the average value. <clears throat> uh, this is a bit more complex because here, in addition to the criteria of the uh, minimal latency, we add the criteria of correctness. First, we select just the correct keys, 
which will be 37, which is a left for condition one, which is red. Mm. Let me demonstrate how it works. Uh, what is called? This is the sequence of our conditions. Now we want to identify only the key presses where the the key 37 has been pressed at the time of the condition 1. So this is our an array of the pressed keys which is stored in the data file. What do we see here? This is probably wrong. This is right. This is right. This is wrong again. Well, actually it has been taken from a simple reaction time. That is why there are always 37. But if we load this uh, data file, we will see something different. First, let's display the conditions. So those are the conditions. They vary in certain random order. And now let's see the, the key presses. Minus ones is the miss. You remember in no go task, we don't press anything for the condition of two. So those are correct responses, which is the lack of response. Here, all the responses are correct as well, because to condition one, we press key 37. Now, what does this mean? This means that we first create the array of elements where each condition one will be replaced with the value of 37 and others will be zeros. And here we logically compare this array with the array of the uh, indices of the keys which has been pressed. And this logical array will give us true or false as a function of correctness of the key or correspondentness. I think there must be five correct at those points. You see those four and this one as well. And if this is placed in brackets after the RT, it will select out, out, out of the entire RT array only the elements which are true, which are five. Those are five reaction times in, uh, in trials where the key press was correct, appropriate to the, the experimental instructions. Then we do the same kind of filtering, sorting out everything that is uh, less than 100 milliseconds. And then we repeat everything that you know already. We press continue and it will draw five elements, five reaction times, and another mean value, which is much higher than uh, simple reaction time, which is expected. The only difference of the analysis of the choice task is that now we have two potential options for the key press to be correct. Either it is condition one 
corresponding to key 37 or this condition 2 corresponding to key 39. Mm, I will not explain this once again. Hopefully, previous explanation was sufficient. And I will just run it. And you see that the choice reaction time is a little bit higher than the go no go reaction time and obviously much higher than simple reaction time but given this tiny number of trials uh, those values can be different from from one experiment to the other you can run this script many times and compute average across many trials so you can increase the number of uh, trials in the same script everything is flexible and everything is available also some explanations or reminders are available in the slides which will be ready at your disposal online uh, hopefully in the next videos we will speak about other uh, paradigms which give nice robust results and which are very easy to program based on what has been done already over the Donders experiment. Thank you.